Welcome back to 12 Days in March. In this edition, we will review a prototypic hemolytic anemia, that being G6PD deficiency for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available for download at the 12 Days website. Let's start with the term insufficiency. In your readings, of course, this is really called G6PD deficiency, but I like to call it insufficiency to reflect on the ranges of phenotypic expression. This is not an all or nothing. The degree of residual enzyme activity determines the clinical severity. Some patients experience minor subclinical manifestations, whereas others suffer a full-blown life-threatening hemolytic anemia. Like I said, this isn't a one-size-fits-all. So I can summarize this entire topic in a single word. Denatured hemoglobin. Actually, that's two words. I'd like to buy a vowel and solve the puzzle. If you can understand why hemoglobin becomes denatured and the consequence of this abnormal denatured hemoglobin, you understand G6PD deficiency. In my mind's eye, I envision this term, denatured hemoglobin, and this graphic. With these thoughts, my mind floods with all the key step one materials you will need to know. So let's move on and begin the discussion of why hemoglobin denatures. So here is the disorder in a nutshell. Shown is the RBC glycolytic pathway. As you can see, deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase impairs the ability of the red cell to form NADPH. NADPH, in turn, is required to regenerate glutathione reductase and glutathione, in turn. Part 2 of the saga is the so-called oxidative stress that results in generation of hydrogen peroxide. As listed, the classic stressors are a number of medications or ingestion of fava beans. And finally, in the absence of glutathione, we lack the ability to metabolize peroxide, which is the injurious agent in this story. Like I said, failure to generate NADPH due to G6PD deficiency is the problem. The red cells need NADPH to regenerate glutathione necessary for the reduction of hydrogen peroxide. So who cares about this stupid enzyme? This guy, which is the red blood cell. Why does he care? Because of these guys. What are those guys? Well, it looks like acne, but it's not. It's denatured hemoglobin. So what just occurred? In the setting of G6PD deficiency plus oxidative stress, we generated hydrogen peroxide. What does hydrogen peroxide do? It leads to loss of sulfhydryl crosslinks on hemoglobin, and the hemoglobin literally denatures. Lock this concept on your brain. The denatured proteins stick to the RBC membrane. Denatured hemoglobin that sticks to the RBC membrane are called Heinz bodies. Got that? And make no mistake about it. You can Google blood stain removers and guess what comes up? Hydrogen peroxide. If Google tells us that peroxide breaks down red blood cells, that's good enough for me. So question one was why hemoglobin denatures? Answered, hydrogen peroxide. Question two addresses the consequences of this reaction. And here it is. The splenic macrophages, which are indiscriminate eaters, love Heinz bodies. They taste like chicken. And on the right, you can see the classic bite cell. The macrophage literally took a bite out of the RBC, trying to remove the Heinz body. And just for completeness, an additional mechanism of hemolysis relates to the lack of deformability of RBCs squeezing through splenic sinusoids. In addition, RBCs with Heinz bodies are unstable and capable of hemolyzing in the intravascular space. So here is the more detailed summary. We're dealing with an X-linked autosomal recessive disorder with lots of different mutations that affect the degree of clinical expression. And here is the key concept. RBCs are born with as much G6PD as they will have in their lifetime. Levels fall as the cells age. If you were deficient at birth, red cell birth that is, then RBCs become quickly deficient since they have no capacity to synthesize additional enzyme. So you can think of deficient individuals as sitting ducks waiting for that oxidative injury. They lack the means to stop it. So pictured here is a normal individual. Got that? Normal, not deficient. Note the half-life of the enzyme, 62 days. As these cells become senescent, Ultimately, they are vulnerable to injury, with the key concept being senescent. But look what happens in insufficiency. The enzyme is depleted in a matter of hours to days. In the setting of that oxidative trigger, peroxide is generated, hemoglobin denatures, and cells are destroyed. And so this cycle continues, 
following exposure to the trigger until new cells with a fresh supply of G6PD are released from the bone marrow. Although I'll repeat this point shortly, if you measure G6PD levels during a hemolytic episode, the level may be normal as the deficient cells have all been hemolyzed and you're assessing levels in the newer, healthier cell. Therefore, to detect deficiency, the level should be assessed in between episodes of hemolysis. We'll come back to this point. Here is a summary of what we already discussed regarding denatured hemoglobin. Do note, hemolysis can be described in the intravascular or extravascular space, with extravascular referring to hemolysis within the spleen. Insofar as Heinz bodies, the test writers won't say, Heinz bodies are present. They will either mention bite cells, show you bite cells, would describe a scenario where the smear shows the following description, dark intranuclear inclusions on supervital staining. The derivative questions will relate to the underlying disorder, i.e. G6PD deficiency, or they will ask the pathologic basis for the abnormality, that being denatured hemoglobin. Insofar as triggers, don't sit around waiting for them to say fava beans or antimicrobials. Instead, they'll describe a patient with bite cells after taking a drug to treat cystitis, or the poor chap who traveled somewhere and ate a bean he'd never eaten before. The trigger will be expressed in code language. Be on the lookout, however, as I've seen questions where they describe a patient on a sulfa antibiotic, then they give you anemia, but with a high or low MCV. So just because you have an anemic patient on sulfa antibiotics or antimalarial medication doesn't mean they have G6PD deficiency. Make sure the patient is normocytic and or is noted with bite cells. Insofar as clinical presentation, most episodes are asymptomatic, but that doesn't make for good test questions. Here is some better information. The episodes are generally self-limited following exposure to that oxidative stress. As such, typical findings of hemolysis, such as splenomegaly and pigment stones, are lacking, so they won't ask about these. Another clue may relate to acute findings of hemolysis, including pink or red urine, jaundice, or symptoms of anemia, such as shortness of breath or weakness. Diagnostically, we already discussed that Heinz bodies are seen on supervital staining and or the presence of bite cells. There will be typical indices of hemolysis present, such as elevations of LDH, reticulocytes, and indirect bilirubin. The haptoglobin level may be depressed, secondary to binding of intravascular hemoglobin. And as this is an enzyme deficiency, it is described as Coombs negative. That is, this is not an autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And the final diagnostic test to be familiar with is the SPOT test. NADPH normally fluoresces when viewed under UV light. In normal circumstances, and you can do this with your own blood, if we take glucose 6-phosphate plus NADP and mix it with your blood, assuming you're not G6PD deficient, 6-phosphogluconate plus NADPH are generated. This is viewed under UV light and fluorescence is noted. If you are deficient in enzyme, NADPH will not be generated and consequently the blood will not fluoresce when viewed under UV light. And that's the spot test. You better remember it or my pet spotted leopard will come and get your first aid manual. Just kidding, he isn't my pet, but he will get your manual. What's the treatment? Just stop the offending agent. They won't ask this. Insofar as special notes, between episodes, all is well. That is, the patient is asymptomatic. And as previously mentioned, during an episode, the G6PD levels may be normal, as most of the bogus cells have already been hemolyzed. And here is a pretty classic image of a bite cell. Note the presence of normochromic and normocytic cells. I've also listed the descriptions of the different stains. The bottom line on special stains is that they require to actually visualize the Heinz body as it isn't seen on a right stain. Compare and contrast that with a Howell Jolly body as seen in Asplenia. Howell Jolly bodies are DNA remnants and may be seen on right stains. Different finding and different diseases, but just tossing it out there as I have been known to confuse the two. And that wraps up our discussion of G6PD insufficiency for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If you can just remember G6PD deficiency is associated with denatured hemoglobin and splenic macrophages love to gobble up the Heinz bodies, you'll have no problem nailing the key derivatives on test day. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.